out those concerns and give people a chance to come. And we should hear from them. We work for the public, and we want to hear from the public. And so it's a chance for people to hear what's going on with the roads, what's going on with the executive session, and what's going on with the treasure for us to give our perspective and for the public to give theirs. We will, note, of course, post the agenda for the meeting in Front Porch Forum. We will also put on Front Porch Forum an English language invitation to come to the meeting. Uh, so the first, the first matter after we come out of the executive session is public, I, public comment for 15 minutes. If you want. And these are for items that are not on the agenda. If they're on the agenda, like Renee, you're next. You know, if they're on the agenda, that's not going to miss it. We'll, we'll, that, that's when we'll, we'll do it. But is there anyone here who would like to make a public comment for an item not on the agenda? Yes, Eric, what I'm going to do is ask everyone who wants to talk to me, please come up and sit down. And Eric, when you do, and everybody, give your name to the bar. Hi, uh, Eric Sorensen. Uh, I live on Petro Road in East Dallas. Thank you. And I had a, a question and a comment yes. about the um, uh, Road Commissioner position and the Public Works Commission position. And we're in a situation now where we have neither right now, right? Uh, other than Rick is operating and Eric is up. So a temporary correct acting. Um, yeah. acting sorry. You uh, volunteer. Volu right, voluntary, right? Uh, what I wondered is there was a lot of mm, confusion uh, on my part, not enough involvement to understand what was going on uh, in terms of hiring the public works director. And I wondered if this wasn't the time to take a bit of a slowdown. Uh, think about those two positions and especially now with Alfred gone, is there a way to uh, reconfigure those into one position? And part of it is which into one both of them, the both of them into one position. And part of why I, I wonder is, and this is the part that I don't understand, is having a public works uh, uh, director when we only have this building in the town hall and not understanding what the full range of that position is. So my, my question is, is that something, and there's a lot of interest in town about that. So I wonder about slowing down and explaining clearly to the town since I haven't been as active as I should be. So we know more what, the, what those decisions are based on before we get into hiring two. Before anyone here responds to that, I just want to say, I think that's really a good question, and really good concerns. We've heard that, and that's why we are going to agenda in the next meeting we have plenty of time to talk about that. For that the issue problem too. right now is it's all, 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 all the, the hiring aspect. The hiring of the works director, the... That wasn't one of the three things that you listed. Mark. So yeah, okay, the public, public works director, <coughs> yes. That's what we'll buy the roads, that's what I meant. The whole, that whole issue, I think we need to go over it, and we need to give people a chance to talk to us about it. Great. Yeah. So, so we will... So you come back? That's Can you do that? Yep. Okay. okay. Great. Great. Thank Can you. I just ask where the, if everybody's got the sign in sheet? It's right here. Yeah. Is there anyone else who would like to make a comment on some item that's not on the agenda? Thank you. So what we're going to do now is move to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is something that's a time saver. It's a way of bundling a whole bunch of things where they're ready to go, they're not super, they're certainly not controversial and they're not super, uh, ur they're not super important but they may be urgent, things like minutes, etc. So the cons I just want to clarify that, and, and we can act on the whole consent agenda at one time. You know, there's, there's one, two, three, four, five, there's nine or ten of them and we're just going to have one motion. I want to talk about it for one minute, but does someone move the consent agenda? I'm moved. So Denise moved it. It was second, seconded by Rick. All right. Uh, I just want to say that the last two items, approved agreement, state highway structure program grant, 
for the Moscow Woods Road and the Brookfield Service Generator Maintenance Contract, it's understood that what that does is give Rick Keen the authority to sign contracts. Uh, sign a grant. Two of them. Two of them. Four and then All right. So. Do I, is there a, uh, we don't, the whole point is there's no discussion. Is there anyone in the, on the board that wants to take an item off the consent agenda? No. I would recommend, though, that we, is it on here? What option? Um, yeah, the two year, the two, um, two services for Brookfield. So they come out twice. Where and are you? On the second stage of the agenda. Top item, approved Brookfield service generator. Just want to make it clear that it's to have two them come to twice. So six months visit. It's every other, right. every six months. So that's right. a year. That's a year time. Right. It's a year for a year. On the agenda, the very top. A year contract for two services. Now you're looking at the bottom generators. of the top. That's on the consent agenda. Right. right. I'm I sorry. just want to make sure it's clear that they're, we're going to pick the twice yeah, the option. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. That's understood. All right. All right. Thank you. So, so it's understood that the EMFD, that the LIC, the Brookfield Services, services Generator Maintenance Contract is to, to have two visits two a year. Two visits a year. All right. All those in favor of the consent agenda, John? Yes. Right. Rick? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Yeah. So it's passed. All right. Okay. So let's move to I just need my the, the roads report. Hang on one minute, please. I just need my pad of paper, so I'll be able to make notes. Thank you, Lisa. So we're not taking up the agenda item to deal with Valentine. Yeah, right now. Okay, Mark says you want to do the report, which is no. We gotta we gotta do the first. Am I looking at an older agenda? No, we have Renee here to talk about first. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. What it is is that my printer printed it out. Okay, so we have the first student bus access on Valentine Road. Renee wrote us an email. We decided to agenda. Renee, why don't you come up? Sit down and let's talk about it. Welcome. So formal. Well, it's just a year. <laughs> and say your name for. Uh, Renee Brankowski. And if you want to know how to spell it, it's in the yeah. on the agenda. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think one way to start this is Renee, you want to. We've read this email so, for the audience and just you want to revise your Sure. Concern. I'll try to be clear. Um, first student used to come down Valentine Road as recently as 2020, maybe from this lunch bus, stopped at our house every day with work packets and lunches through federal support. Um, if you speak up just a little bit. Sure, I can try. Thank you. Uh, so the, the bus came past our house at least through 2020 and um, it no longer comes. My understanding is through some conversations with our roads crew, our road is now deemed too narrow and windy. I don't know, I don't think the road is narrow, so I don't know if there's a new road width requirement for first student. I don't believe it's any more narrow than some of our other roads. Duba Brook comes to mind, and certainly East Montpelier is in our district, the roads near Templeton. So I don't know if we have a chicken or an egg here. Um, is our road too narrow? If it is, how do we remedy that? Because we have a number of students in our small population of school that access that. You said 2020, what about like last year? I don't know for sure because we've had some house construction stuff, but we're oh, trying okay. to. Uh, so we are not able to access the bus then because we but this have year is renovations. Right. So, so after we received their yeah. email of concern, I drove the length of Valentine coming up from 14. And I just want to say, from my perspective, the road is actually wider than it's been because there was some work done, I want to say, four years ago. And you know, our, our select board was concerned about the work, frankly. Uh, maybe it was three years ago where, when you were bringing on the board, right? so 
and, and rather, if there's a constrained portion down by Route 14 where the hillside comes in, and it was ditched on both sides, causing the road, the active road area, to be very narrow, narrower than it had ever been. Um, and so I know that there would be to provide some input that maybe instead of ditching it again that way, that they just ditch one side and they angle the road so that the road could be again made wider. Um, but as, as these things go, those ditches fill in with material if they're not cleaned up. So those ditches are full. The road is about as wide as it can be. You know, the, the embankments are confining it. And uh, if the truck, if the bus ran two years ago, it was experiencing a much narrower road. So I don't understand what happened. Well, that's my question. It's, you know, we don't know. So maybe we you should. Ask them what changed? No, I, I, I was sent to this. Yeah, it's <laughs> actually, I mean, it's, we, not, it's not my understanding is that we don't have any, am I right? We don't have anything to do with where the school bus Right. Choose to go or not go, but but they do. Sorry to be passing. They no, but no, Mark, no. they do. We do coordinate with them plowing schedules, uh -huh. and if they have concerns with the road or the road quality, we converse with them. I know on Singleton Road, when our kids used to go, um, and sometimes it's bus driver or bus driver. The bus driver used to come by and go down that switchbacky stretch, and then our bus driver Ike passed away, and we got a different bus driver, and he was freaked about going down that road. So I think sometimes they rely on what the bus driver is comfortable with. I don't believe that because the bus is going to say, we can't go down this road because it's too narrow and tell us what, yeah. why it's too narrow. You know, what, what is it and what width does it need to be? So currently the bus stop is on the 14 and there is a downtown, which I find extremely dangerous. It is dangerous. So I've been told to come to you, so I sent What did you say to me by first? I, I've tried to go through the school, the school board, and then first student, and I, my only course of action appears to be through the select board. I don't, I don't know, know what I'm even asking for. I just, yeah. I don't know what has yeah. changed to make the bus not come, and I don't know what we need to do to allow well, We need to, to reach out to them. <laughs> I think we need to not pass the buck, and we need to reach out to first student and find out what their concerns are. Yeah, it seems like they back to you and figure out. Yeah. We haven't done anything. Just there's a narrow going on. Like we've been narrowing roads. We have not narrowed any roads in Calus ever. Yeah. And I've been on this board 16 years. Okay. Nothing's they been that narrow. Wider. They're, they're wider than they were when I started on this board. So I'm not um, subscribing to any narrative. I've yeah. just been told yeah, that no, it's no. too narrow and, and yeah. it's too well, wide. And, but that has not changed. So yeah. I just want to get you know you talked to at first two. No, because it wasn't the same job. I was going to take care of it. Okay, thank you. So, Rick is, let's clarify this. Thank you for coming in. We're yeah. trying not to ask the buck back. And we're, we're willing to help work on a solution. Yeah. We'll even give the bus a turn yeah. on our property if that's if that's the issue, if it's above us. But so, where are we going? Just below the switchback. Yeah, I'll follow up tomorrow. Okay, so, Rick, will you? Rather than rely on coming back to us for the next meeting, can you talk to Renee? Okay. Talk to Renee. Uh, okay, and let's see how far we can move this. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So we don't have to keep because I mean, it's, it, we're not the only family. Yeah. No, yeah. Right. Do you know roughly how many students? Yeah. Seven, I think. Seven. Well, I mean, at Calus Elementary, I think there's some at New Jersey as well. Okay. So, there's so it's the nine. same thing with the U32 bus as it is the elementary school. Well, it's the same bus. It, it runs U32 and then runs Calus. So your house is the one under construction? Yeah. Okay. So, yes. Got it. Nice. Great place to talk That's a different show. Yeah. <laughs> Looks good. Moved that one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll watch the same second for our road commissioner to. Uh, By the way, I do want to mention to the board something that we should talk about, which is that meeting, the, the agenda for next week, where we're going to discuss the roads and the public works, all those, all those issues. You know, I discovered that our neighboring towns, Plainfield and Marshfield, uh, all their meetings are on Zoom. And uh, as is the school district, our school district, and Twinfield school district. 
we, we were on Zoom, and, and actually we had problems here because of bandwidth, and it's always a pain. But I would sure like to go back to being on Zoom. I think, I think the, it's- The biggest issue for Zoom- We gotta make it work. So. The biggest issue for Zoom, and we actually put up blankets to right. dull down the reflectiveness of these walls. Yeah. We were hoping that by now we would have the, the town hall committee was supposed to work. And hopefully we'll be still working on some solutions to that. To get something in LA to, to stop the echo effect. Stop the echo. And yeah. that's been the, the overriding yeah. issue. People have had trouble hearing. I mean, Sharon might be having to. Okay. And, and, and also, you know, really, the internet here is terrible. terrible. But when CD Fiber puts in the lines, that should help. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. We'll see what we can do on that. Right. Anyway, yeah. I was just stalling while we were yeah. waiting for our road commissioner. Sorry. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, we were doing yeah. God's work from well, there. No, right. We have East Montpelier on next, Mr. Right. Chair. That's right. EMFD. Yeah. 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 I'm so anxious to get there. Okay. EMFD, yeah. first. Here's the night. Before we get off the road, the road is tonight. Well, no, here they are. Okay. They're next to the building. You're on that Okay, okay. So, this is the East Montpelier Fire Department. Right. And this is the purchase of the Striker Power Lift System, which allows, which are essentially. Say that again. Is it Power Light or Power Lift? Power Lift. Power Lift. It allows, it, it, it essentially allows someone who's, whether they're light or very heavy, to be. Put, trans, to be put into the ambulance with, and taken out of the ambulance without causing back injury by the personnel involved. Please tell us your names and talk to us. My name is Larry Brown. I'm the East Montclair Fire Chief. Thank you, Larry. No, Paul Boyer, the, the Vice President of the organization. Great. So back in March, we came before the boards to get a power lift system for one of our ambulances. And the power lift system is made by Stryker. It's a device that allows a very heavy person to be lifted safely into the ambulance and then be taken out of the hospital so that when we're at the hospital, we can transport that patient without having the attendants, whether it's myself and Paul, or whether it's two of our lady attendants or whatever, be able to take somebody out. So I think one or two of you were at the field days and saw the power lift system. I did a two minute video today, lifting somebody with a stretcher that weighed 450 pounds approximately, with one person doing the lift and actually using one hand to load that person and unload them. Now, under normal circumstances, when we go out, we have a crew of two. And to get anybody out of the house, we have what's called a striker stair chair system, which also is a very expensive item, but allows us to safely put a person in a chair and bring them down, say, 10 or 15 stairs. They're strapped in the chair, it's got a track system, and that also is something that keeps the lifting factor out of lifting somebody physically up and bringing them down. Once we get another ground level, we have the power cot system. The power lift cot is a system that we put in back of probably about a year and a half, two years ago, the stretchers, which run by battery, which when you push a button, it'll lift the patient to the height of the ambulance. And then when we put the patient in, we start that to lift. The stretcher weighs approximately 150 pounds. And with the person on it, uh, we did use one of our lighter guys to show this demo here for two minutes. It was Alex Bogazowski, who was six foot seven, 285 pounds. Okay, a big guy. So <clears throat> Alex, we put him on the cot. With the weight of the cot, we have 430 plus pounds. And if I could just take a two minutes just to show you this. Could you, could you perhaps can you stand up here? Stand up here I so can. that people in the audience as well as we can see it. Right. I'm it's, actually one of the people who saw it, but. Okay. You guys have all seen this? Seen uh, Maybe I've we seen, could put it right here. Uh, for everybody here to see it. Well, it's, uh, if I can just, without tripping on anything here, you might not be able to see what we got going on here, but. Can you guys see that? Alex uh, we had to lift 
down the sun is fine. You would think two feet from Alex is, what's your weight, Alex? 285. Alex is 285 plus the stretcher. So we'd have 285 plus 150. We'd have 400 plus pounds to lift manually into the ambulance once the cot is down. So that's been the problem before. Not one, one person could not lift that cot. Since two people lifting a total of 400 plus pounds would be a challenge. Could you stop it for a moment? Sure. Right now, before he puts it in. Uh, I actually was given a demonstration. And one of the things that wasn't clear to me is the problem, the problem of an unassisted, you know, without this system, the problem is, is that when you pull it out or when you're putting it in, there is a moment where one end of it is supported, but the other end is not supported. Exactly. And so the only way that you can do it is by holding it up. And it's incredibly heavy. So two people, we usually okay, have two, sorry, two okay. people lifting on that, still have to maintain that three, 400 pounds. And so we do have people in the area that weigh five, six, and 700 pounds. Yeah, so this, this demonstration here is without the auto. Right, right. This, this is the just system. the, this is just the system. Still required lifting. See, right there. So and then they're holding it for a moment when the legs go up. Yeah, they it's a electric leg, not to be confused with the auto loader. Yeah. That's totally, totally different. The manual stretcher, and if we have a person getting it, we have to do it. We'll come over to the other ambulance, which is rescue three. <coughs> Alex, do you want me to go over to the emergency brake? Turn the key on for the city emergency brake. What we'll do here is the power lift system. So just set the emergency brake. And this is the new one that we want to we want to get. Yeah, you've already got one one. That's right? it. This yeah. is it that we, right. we, we, we just put in. Right, we approved one easily yeah. last year. Right, yeah. Yeah. And this is it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's over 400, probably 25 or 30 pounds. And so we have one person now to try to take Alex out. Normally, you'd have to carry that weight without this system. It's just, it's just, it's just sitting there. It extends without anybody having to hold it up. So now we would just pull him out all the way up, and we're going to just show you that we had to lift him. Now we're putting him back in. He was on the ground, so Mark's going to push the stretcher back in. So these wheels would get on See, these, look, uh, winter surfaces at the hospital. Look, it just it holds itself up even when the wheels are on the track. It's on the trolley. So that's the benefits of the power lift cross system. Thank you. Could you could you tell us clarify for us? I, I, I'm sorry, I might others might know the answer. I don't. Number one, what's it cost? Number two, is it in your capital budget? Or what are you asking of us? So the power lift system is approximately $27,000 and installation is approximately $3,000. So it's approximately $30,000 was the price of the last one. And the EMFD's capital budget currently, as of last month, has 157000 in the budget. We won't get the figure for September until the end of this month, or is a month behind. So the fire department has the ability to spend $20,000 without coming to the board. I see. This uh, project here is, yeah. we need permission. Uh, we just read each month, Billy, they gave their permission. Before we even came to the select board, this was brought to the board of directors which was unanimously approved. It was brought to the membership Tuesday night, full membership meeting, and the full membership approved it unanimously. So the system that we see here now, we're going to put it in the second ambulance, which is the older ambulance, 2010. But what we can do with this system is 
the 2010 ambulance is due for replacement within the next two, three, four, five years, depending on it. And we're going to take this out of that ambulance and put it in. The new federal regulations call that all ambulances in the future from now on, or back a few years ago, have this system in because of the back injuries and workers' cough injuries that they were receiving, which was catastrophic in our industry of trying to lift people in. So this system would be moved into the next ambulance saving approximately $55,000 because of the cot and the system itself. We talked with specialty vehicles down in Boston, the Boston area, which installs them. Cost $1,000 to deinstall, $2,000 to reinstall into a new ambulance. And that's what we've been paying right along, is about $2,000 for installation of the, of the unit. So are you ready for a motion? Thank you. I would like a motion on the floor. I'd like, to, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the Montana Fire Department to transfer the sum of thirty thousand dollars from the capital fund to pay for the power striker power lift system. We'd like to just to be a second. I would like to just right. sorry. Right. We'd like to just move ahead with. Uh, we think the there is a cost increase. And so we're asking if we can spend up to 35, we think we're going to spend 31. Yep. Just in case there's an installation so cost. So I'll amend my motion to now to exceed 35. And I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. And I strongly support this motion. I feel that it's, it's a, first of all, it means that it's very difficult for a smaller person or a woman to operate the system without it. And so it's intrinsically remedies a sort of a physical and, well, and nobody should have to no and, and people who are larger they can uh, get that without back injury. So I think this is a great system. I support the motion. Is there any other comment? No, I agree with that. I I fully support that. I I would see it would be limiting if I, you always have to have very large strong. We, we, yeah, always call we, call we, we always call the fire department personnel. Yeah, yeah they kind of slow you down and everything else. Substantial. You want to do a roll call? A uh, roll call vote. Denise? Aye. John? Aye. Rick? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Mark? Yes. Thank you so much for bothering to come. Thank you. Thank you, and Thank you for, for putting us for your service. Thank you for putting us on the agenda, and we're looking forward to having a safer, better way to service Dallas and East Yeah, Thanks thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I understand last weekend was a success. It was a yes. huge success. I saw thank the media. You so much. Yes. Yeah, you guys did a great job. Thank yeah. you for coming. Thank yeah. you again. I was thank in so Florida. Much. Oh, that's too bad. I was just coming home to her again. That's why I wasn't there. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Alex yeah. was there. He's yeah. a great guest. Yep. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. These guys brought, along with the very brought their fire trucks to the Fall Harvest Festival in the rec field that the East Calus Community Trust sponsored, and the kids had one. They, they had a blast. They had a blast. They brought their hoses and all that, the whole thing. Okay. So only three, four minutes late. Uh, Rick, as commissioner, your Rose report. Oh, I thought I already know. Uh, well, we are obviously we're signing the team for it, so we're going to put a great start here for the Moscow Woods for a $90,000 grant from Moscow Woods. Speak up just a little. To begin repair, to begin uh, repairs on the power projects we have to call next year. In the coming year, we've got to design and do a lot of replacement on that bridge. For the time being, we did, you know, and the wolf engineering looked at the structures. We've got one failed, basically one unsupported beam, so that we have to keep load off of that. The rest of the structure is, is, is intact right now, which I want to follow up with another visit, possible this fall, to make sure it's going to be stable for the winter. I talked to Rini Degasio this weekend, and and she thought it was a very good idea to come, come up with some kind of contingency plan in case we have to do a road closure on that road. And I agree to have some work on that, and we'll try to make that public. And we will make it public somehow, so in case we have to, you know, in some circumstance where that probably gets worse. I think primarily, for, I'll see if there's anything you can do to kind of stabilize it in the short term to prevent that. And I told Alfred while well, he was still here to try to do anything you could to divert water from that failed body, you know, keep water from pouring into that failed area. Rick, Rick. Um, yeah. So last I went through there, there were just columns. 
Do you think maybe we could place it or should place the Jersey barrier against that wall, the bridge? Because those cones aren't going to last in one snow plowing, so, and people aren't, they're going to get covered. And, uh, yeah, we can, well, I'll have to see that what we, we, I'll see what we've got. Place the river we want. Okay. We do have duty to the bridge, last I knew. So, so if we can place them, yeah, that's a good idea. And maybe some little flags or something. Some of the snow banks. Not people will hit the, hit the, the barriers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I almost suggest we get to walk in to take another peek at and look at that for winter crap to make sure mm -hmm. that we can carry through. Can uh, you make that happen? Yeah. Do you need anything from us? Uh, you'll just do this, right? You know, yeah, try uh, okay. me, yeah. uh, Can you report? Is it possible for you to report back to us at the next meeting? And there will be a road report. You mean? If you've got anything, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's touch. I would suggest we touch base on that every day. Yeah, yeah, we'll check. Yes, I think you. Well, the Jersey you. barrier makes sense. That should be done. Asap. You want to explain, no, I, we may want to wait. What Jersey, explain what the Jersey barrier is. Folks know what that is? I think everyone does. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would suggest we may want to wait just to tell them what's that. Okay. You can always slide it away. That's true. We can pick it up and then. Yeah. Yeah, we can. We'll, we'll see if we can get the. the yeah. And the group payment. I'm sorry. And we have a, yeah, we have a. We also have a thirty-five thousand dollars best management practice grant. Also, we're improving. It's a bit really water quality related for some fruit mm -hmm. fishing. So, so that's that's also to be signed tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah we just so, did those on the consent agenda. We did. So yeah, I just haven't signed yet. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay, and then let's see. Hold on. We did, I did get a couple other, some other feedback. Someone had cut, gone and put their own dirt speed bumps on the Robinson Hill. I think they've been, I think they've been graded out since. It was illegally done. So I don't know Whereabouts on that road? I don't know exactly where. I just know it was, it was someone had put. There were hole. ditches or added? Oh, I'm saying come and, you know, somehow raise speed bumps out of the dirt. So, you know, I think, I, we kind of, you know, we reached out, we reached out there, so we got to that. Right. That's Robinson Hill, not Robinson Cemetery. Right, right, it was Robinson Hill and Robinson Cemetery. Yeah, look, and, uh, but they were great at, somebody else graded it out. Interestingly enough, I didn't talk to you. So apparently, you know, they had the only McCoy's. Yeah, they yeah. did So, and then, uh, yeah, let's see. Do we have a first up application with Tyler Clark? Do we want to act on that right now? Yes, is it? Yeah, we are we doing that under the Tyler can't he was going to be here, but he's got a his father in law is in a hospital where he's like Okay, so I'll take notes about what yeah, you Yeah, I I met I went to the site. What conditions? Can we hear the you can give me the actual copy here? Yeah, the uh, it's a really clear cut electrical right of way. He's got a sugar house. He has to pull 200 amp service in to drive his RO in it. And it's been a very long, straight piece of road. There's a natural bypass for road construction right, right in his driveway. Yeah. So, and it's, uh, he's taking that to a minimum of four foot depth. Conditions would be a two, two and a half inch schedule that you try to do it. Say what? The cable, the electrical cable needs to be put in a four feet deep. Um, okay, so electrical conduit schedule 80. Is schedule 80 conduit <laughs> for the cable. It's a height for the cable to run in. Are you talking yes. about the Tyler Clark one? Yes, yes. yeah, Tyler Clark. Okay, so Sorry. can you talk in English so I can write this down? <laughs> we have to, when we receive a curb cut application, we have to literally write on it the conditions that we are imposing. And those conditions come either from, they come from the road commissioner. Okay. Okay. He's consulted with the road crew. Okay, so you, so we're going to bury the electrical cable for four and a half feet? We will, it'll be four feet, minimum four feet. Four feet. And it will have, the cable will be in place inside of a schedule A. Whatever that is. 
it's this wall thickness of the yellow that happens, that's correct. So, place inside. Schedule 80. Grade conduit. Mm -hmm. It has to be pipe heaviness. Yeah, it's durability. It's durability. Okay, con Schedule 80 conduit. And what was the rest of it? Two and a half inches in diameter. Anything at any other yeah. dimension? I'd let her finish that. Tell me what you're asking. I know there's going to have to be contact here, right? Yeah, that's absolutely. See how much I've learned? And also, you know, basically in the roadway using the same material that they extract. So, okay. so compact. Same material. In reverse order. In reverse order. As you go down to depth and it's clay and as you work your way up, it's Con hopefully Compact in reverse order to previous condition, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, also, I want to see a warning they made warning tape put in it to two feet, the two foot mark above that cable. That's so that anybody excavating along that road. So it's a permanent marker? It's a ribbon, it's a red ribbon that marks. It says warning yeah. cable below. So the excavator hits it. It's it's all the same okay, so my question is it's a permanent marker? Yes. Yes. Okay, so it's still right in the it's trash. Buried. It's buried in the trash. Okay, install red warning ribbon. Warning. In trench above two feet, or a, a two, a, a, a roughly a foot and a half to two feet above cable. Okay. Above conduit. Got it. Okay. And then the last thing we can put. Yeah, the room out of room. Just, just, uh, so just road detour sign, safety sign. And they can borrow those from the shop. Greaves Town. Road safety features. So I move we approve the application as amended. I'll second. It's, that, it's John moving, Rick approving, seconding. Denise? Aye. Rick? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Uh, John? Aye. Mark? Is aye. Thank you, that's approved. Go ahead, Rick. Rick, so you have, we have here a date route payment as an owner. We still have that CB fiber yeah, right away application. CB fiber ROW. I, know, I didn't get to visit those. Eric did, but he is not. He's not here. Eric, not here. Eric Eric saw them and he blessed them. He blessed them. I right. think so. Right. Well, we just have to call David up right here. Can you come? Is this. You're probably going to want to put the same flash in zones. That, that's the Plainfield Select Board. This is the Cal Select Board. So are you recording or not? I'm, I'm recording, yes. Yeah, okay. I'm very sorry that it's... My name is David Healy, the delegate from the town of Calus to CB Fiber. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's let... Sure. Just use that. Okay, David, do you want to say your name? I'm David Healy, uh, the Calus delegate to CD Fiber. And I'm here tonight to get permission to put a number of underground conduits on. And these may not happen. I mean, right now, the engineer says this is where we need to go underground. Uh, Lightning Ridge Road hits Bay Road for 1,100 feet. Marsh Hill Road for about 1,600 feet. Um, this other road, the private road, so it's not a matter. Foster Hill Road, 1,100 feet. Valentine slash Bennett Road for 600 feet. And Worcester Road for 500 feet. And Moscow Woods Road for 1,300 feet. What about Lamberton Camp Road? If it's a private road. Uh, Eric wrote down as a private road, so I don't know whether there's any rules that the town has on that. Oh, in terms of road construction, we don't right. regulate the town. Yeah, yeah. We so we have to get permission. Right. We have to get it. So we, we should cross, because yeah. I had that one on here, should I, I should cross that off. Yeah, right? please. 
It's a beautiful road. Is that cool? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know who maintains it. It's in pretty good shape. Anyway, um, so the plan is construction should start next month. Um, how many of these get done this year? I'm not sure. So the, the question mark on the agenda was 2022, 2023. I would say I would go into 2024 because there's certain pieces of catalyst that will not be served. Right, according to that map. Yeah. 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 So that's the, uh, the only uh, limitation on that. Some of these may not get built at all because they either have, right now we're only building two residences or buildings that have, that are on the grid. Some of these things, like the Moscow Woods Road, that's right near Ledge Road. I don't. You know, if we're going to be building up there. <laughs> it's all on the land road. Yeah. But you went on Moscow Wood. Right. Yeah. So, so those are the only, I, I mean, so we're looking for the permits. We may never do some of them, but we'd like to have them. Well, I took and just put all the roads on this. Yeah, so oh, okay. Oh, on, great. The, on, on the permit. Yep. Um, and then I took the wording from the application as the project description. <clears throat> that says working the highway right of way 24.75 feet from the center line more or less depending on right of way width plow trench or bore three inch wide and three feet deep along roads and like two inch conduit on top of each other with two foot by three foot hand holes approximately every other, every 500 feet if ledge is present a small excavator will be used yeah, there you breaks. Right, so okay. and we'll be putting the tape on the pipe as well. Right. And the question, oh, the question I have with that is, that, you know, should some kind of dry back to that sort of, I mean, you've got that in front of it, the two inch conduit, so that's heavy enough. Yes. Want to make sure that that's deep enough and heavy enough that, that you know, if there's some kind of dry across that, then it's, it works. Yeah. yeah, and we don't want to have a <laughs> so you've got 500 foot sections that basically that that we need to pull to pull get something out. Yep. Yeah. So those are little boxes that will be on the road, not big ones, but big enough so they can get the fiber in and out. So so there was some question uh, as to permit application fees, and I, I would just like, just for clarifying purposes, the select board to acknowledge that this is a municipal or quasi municipal municipal effort right. and that application fees are, are not applicable and not required in these instances. <clears throat> so right, yeah, it's a talent based project. Right. That was my thought. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's that let clarification read. should be in the motion. Right. And let the minutes reflect that that's what the board but I think we can just put that in the motion when they right. we put a motion. Right. But so we need to have the conditions. Is this one we, you're going to use safety detour signs? Yep. Are these going to be the same conditions as this one? Uh, well, that's, I think we had four put in. They're going to three feet on this. We should be. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and it's not electrical cable, but it's still cable. Right? It's fiber optic. Okay, so we're going to put the fiber optic. Cable inside this conduit. And an empty conduit. These are the water ribbons, so nobody digs into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to put the fiber optic cable inside the conduit. So in the balance of the cables will be strung pole to pole on all this for water, and they come down. And then go through run jumpers from a box to the individual residences being served then at some point. There'll be aerial connections and aerial post and then underground where people want to play the underground. Are there, there, are there, there are no underground electrical cable complex in there, correct? So they actually do it on the light and bridge one is an underground electrical cable there. There is. Is there any, is there an issue? Is there a process? It no. The, in action. fact, in that case, I'm looking forward to not having to do Lightning Ridge because Velcro did it last year. But that was the. <laughs> yeah. And they, and they left us, They gave us a spare car. So we're going to end. Sierra. Install red warning ribbon in the trench. Above. Yeah. Above. Above. And the same thing with the reverse compacting. Yeah. Reverse 
fill back to So uh, we're making, um, I'm a, I'll make a motion that we approve the CD fiber right of way permit with the conditions as noted. And that because this is a municipal project, that the fee is waived. The application fee. All right. Any further discussion? Rick? No. John? Yes. 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 Good. Uh, yes. Denise? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Mark? Yes. The motion passes. David? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, David. And could I schedule a time to come in and give you a complete layout of what's happening and where and mm -hmm. how, how? Absolutely. Happens. Yeah, that'd be great. You'd love it. Are you staying for the time? Yes, I'll stay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just want to ask Rick, will you, in your road to report a week from now, can you report on just generally how things are going with the road crew, which we I will support. Yeah, we yeah. support. You did a wonderful work. Yeah. All right. Um, town hall. So town hall usage policy. Um, Denise, you want to take the lead on this and yeah, then I'll we, comment. Yeah. Um, we ask that Town Hall, friends of Cal Town Hall, um, to give us an updated usage policy, which they did. And I reviewed it, and not being a lawyer, Mark is, I had a bunch of questions. Um, and we didn't get it in a word format. We only, the only way we had to work on it was hard copy. So I made a bunch of notes, Mark looked at my notes, and there's a couple of small things that we need to change, like we need to say it needs to come to the select board, not the town. You know, so little things like that, just to make it clear when somebody's reading it. So I guess what Mark, we'd like to do is get this finalized and either approve it tonight and move forward or put it on the next agenda. The problem is, I don't know that the select board has seen it in electronic form. Uh, okay, so with that, we don't get it. I've asked, for, I've asked for it electronically, like in a word format or something, so that we can look at it and insert a couple That's of That's Cliff probably has something. Yeah, yeah, I've contacted Cliff. Okay, okay yeah. so well, this is in right direction, but I just want to say and ask a question to you guys. The contract is fine. It's not great. It could be rewritten substantially if we took the time, but it can be cleaned up a little bit. And to do that faster, is this something we want to move on? Well, so is it, isn't it, don't we continue under this contract until we have a new one? Doesn't it have continuation language in there? I thought we did that. Yeah, well, we're operating under the old one. This is. Right. This is just a new one. Right, I understand. I, I'm pretty sure we put continuation line there. I remember asking that until we act on a new contract or if we miss a, an expiration date, that the terms and conditions are continued until we act. I think that's I'm pretty in sure that's I don't in remember, there. but I think that's in there. Okay, so what we'll do that. is Denise and I yeah. will revise this. We'll get it out in electronic form to right. you guys and schedule it for action. Yeah. Um, with the understanding that the terms and conditions right. in, in the existing contract are continued right. to such yeah. time. Right. right, that should be just standard yeah. language, right? Yeah. yeah, I think it's in there, because I remember putting it in there. All right. Okay. Um, personnel update, information only, Denise? Um, I don't really have much to update. We've had uh, applications filed for the treasurer of business manager position. Um, so we'll follow up on those. And I don't, oh, we have a new road crew member whose name is Ogden Percy. He lives in East Cali. And I've got all his paperwork here, ready to onboard him onto the system. And his first day of work was this day. Yeah. All right, Denise. Do we uh, maybe we could also mention that we had a couple of folks volunteer to help us 
as, as this board knows, we had a meeting with our town constable just last week. Our former town constable, Wins Wilson Hughes, and Wilson told us uh, that, in fact, he went, he attended the police academy as soon as he became constable and elevated his status uh, as constable to law enforcement level. And there are a number of reasons for that that made sense and I think continue to be justifiable. Um, and I think that this deserves a broader discussion. I would think in the, in the interim we should, of course, limit the powers to this, but I, I don't think we should uh, block in consideration, considering or create a negative image around someone seeking law enforcement, uh, greater law enforcement powers. The constable position used to have all those powers, and they have value, they have very great value. Um, we have to have the right person, of course, who, uh, the person who seeks those additional duties would need to have that additional accreditation approved by us. Um, but in the end, I think we, we should keep that in our minds as possible, uh, as a possibility in the future. Um, it's not say, always a negative. Right, right, right. right. But I, I still want people to right. misconstrue right. Well, the value of this. Yes, I, I need clarification. <laughs> if we advertise and we say we'd like to have a constable that can perform these functions mm -hmm. and we list them. And we don't say we are prohibiting, encouraging, anything else. We just are silent on everything else. Right. Right. Then we interview whomever we interview. You know, we don't tend to get inundated with applicants. No, no, I know. And we interview whoever we interview. And if we feel that the person that we hire is of the temperament right. that we want, and we right. know that's not always the case, mm -hmm. then we can encourage them to go for it. Yeah. yeah and if we think we, we need that, I mean, we still need to have a full conversation, but I, I just don't want yeah. us to, to prohibit block that. Or prohibit no, that I'm not suggesting, I'm not suggesting that yeah. we do that. I'm yes. Okay, I misunderstood. Yeah. So we would state clearly that there is a baseline. It's a baseline. Yeah. This is what the expectations for right. the possibility right. expanded. Well, we don't need, I, I don't we think we don't need to say, say that. Okay. Um, are you comfortable then bringing this back, Sharon, for action at some near future meeting? Uh, I I think that, I think we're all on the same page. We're, yeah. we're not. I would agree. We're not looking to um, set off a discussion if if at some point maybe in a, in a relatively near future, but also maybe not in a relatively near future, depending on how you know what else is on our plate, but. I, I'm not, I wouldn't either want to cut off the discussion. What I do want is to authorize us uh, to approve recruiting for what, I would even use level one, I would use the language. This is what the constant duties are. Is that, are we all saying the same thing? And yes. Yes. Okay. So yes, I will put that on a, even the next agenda because we have basically had the discussion tonight. Does everyone agree with that? Yes, except I would like to ask, is there anyone, we've all been blithering on saying what we think, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address this issue? We, I should explain that briefly. Um, you know, we're talking about basic constable capabilities whether someone, we then authorize someone to go to classes and end up with law enforcement capability, which means they can carry a gun, and all of that really depends on, we, we're saying we'd like to make that decision when we know who we're dealing with as a person. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address this issue? Okay, so we have- Mark, Mark, I would say it a little differently, but okay. it's not that we're necessarily That's waiting to see who yeah, we're saving that conversation for, for another day with an open mind. Yeah, you would want to I just want to say that, that makes perfect sense. Could you <laughs> say your name for her? Oh, I'm sorry. Marilyn Bush. Marilyn Bush. Marilyn, uh, yes. That, um, <clears throat> it makes perfect sense to 
to do, to do that sort of thing because uh, sometimes you get, you know, to get somebody in a position that really, you know, maybe don't want to give them a gun. Yeah. Right? Um, so I, I totally agree with that. Thank you. Uh, I think we've got our consensus here and we're going to make this, we're going to bring this to our meeting as soon as we can. Yeah. Probably our next meeting. Okay. Um, okay. This, this, uh, the open position. Just one thing too, yeah. Uh, so in the folder, I created from, I didn't build it out of whole cloth. I just took a, a, an Excel spreadsheet that we have in our folder that tracks all of the various uh, board appointments, commission appointments, etc. in town. And I put this out for folks to see what According to according to the information we have, what the status of various uh, appointments is, and um, I'm sorry, I lost my open folder, so I'm going back to open that again. Um, and so it's all red because in the master spreadsheet I highlighted in red things that were open or vacant. Uh, that's the only reason they're all in red. So I just wanted to. Let everybody know it's there because it's called you for reappointment. Um, I think I, I'm pretty sure that, that some of this is wrong. That there's information that we that we have that hasn't been captured. I did go back through the minutes of the last year to make sure that I captured more recent appointments. So I think the first question, the first thing I'm asking for is just for people to take a look at it and say, even off the top of your head, this person quit, that was sometime around last fall. Uh, if we had record of that in the minutes, that would be great. So that we could distill down to, okay, what, what with some level of accuracy are the open positions and who needs to be reappointed um, in positions that they hold right now? Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. For example, uh, uh, like the the tree warden, Neil Baker should have, I think, been reappointed and, and through. That's just two a couple of examples that I'm just looking at right now. Um, and that's probably accurate. Some of the other things in here are not accurate. Okay. It's one of it's one of the things you so one of the things you're asking for is for us to look at this, not necessarily right now, but to look at it carefully. And make sure that send me, it's yeah, send me an email. Yeah. The second, of course, yeah. that you're implying, am I right, is that we should be a little more punctilious about reappointing people to positions when their term is expired mm -hmm. rather than just letting them go on. Right? Well, exactly. There's that exactly. And that's, that's part of we it. Did, we did, um, we did in the early part of the year, we did several in April, May, June. And and then and then we just did it. No, we got we got distracted with other things going on. So <laughs> that's right. All the other top priorities. Right. Okay. All right. Now, gosh, seven minutes ahead of time. Oh my wow. uh, That's a hard Four round robin brought on uh, items of order. Other business. This is just a chance for those in the audience. This is just a chance for us to go around and say, what's on your mind about all the you know, things that have come about that we want to, it's pretty much what we want to talk about. It's not action items. It's the sort of housekeeping and other items. So Rick, you want to start? <coughs> uh, oh, uh, well, I feel
These are the signs that we approve early. We have, we have serious speeding problems on a number of our roads, including County Road, really even West County Road, Lightning Ridge, Lightning Ridge. 14, yeah, 14. So we use federal funds to buy portable and fixed speed signs, which have the advantage of not only slowing people down because the average person but they also <coughs> record what's going on. They record speeds and times, so they're white traffic counters. So they, they're white traffic counters, and they give us an idea of what's happening on the road, and it gives law enforcement the ability to see if there's certain times of the day when habitual speeders, not people like you and me, who just drive a little fast, uh, you know, um, what? <laughs> So that so you guys what's going on? Is that something that's going on? Which said they just arrived. Oh, they did. Oh, they did. <coughs> good. Oh, good. So, so in our road crew, wonderful road crew is doing good work with these, and we'll try to figure out what's going on. We also just so you know. I think you might want to comment on this. As we just recently, um, we, we approved uh, the use of speed bumps on County Road. And then we learned that this could be a real problem, a safety problem, that speed bumps, when people are going fast, the kinds of speeds that people are going on County Road, you could, you, people could just skid off the road and so we rescinded the speed bump approval and instead authorized the commissioner to seriously consider scoring, grooving the road. Well, what we'd like to do, can I address that? Yes, please. The road does it's actually really relatively inexpensive. It, 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 there's a machine that you know, scores the asphalt with air and patterns on the road. You've seen them, but uh, loose and things like that, and it, it so it makes a problem with the tires cost, and it kind of works well. But I wanted to, we'll try, we'll try to do that after we get a speed sign. We're going to do this on uh, just west now on uh, on the county road, well above the brow. We're going to put where the speed on that county road drops to 25. We'll put in one of our new radar speed signs. And then we're going to we'll probably, what we may do is see if that impacts the driver's speed first. And then we will consider, you know, grouping in that paper. And we'll probably want to wait until we see if the speed sands times deal with the issues first. Mainly because of the rumble strip kind of things make noise. So we're going to, okay, we're going to get complaints. But it's a uh, point. You know, so. It's kind of an incremental approach to this, and so we'll see how it comes. So the first, the first thing will be for us to get some of the speed signs in there. And then right now, you'll notice one of the speed signs, an old one, that we've got was moved down into the village in Maple Corners. And, and I think that's got speed capacity. I didn't order that, but I believe that it measures traffic speed. And we have to turn that sign off. But still had it measured speed of vehicles. So once we put in a sign, we should be able to measure free flowing vehicle speed now. And the ideal thing would be able to then compare it to when we install a new sign well up above that hill. This is where that sign should have been long before it hit the downhill section in the down in the maple corner. You can see if it impacts the speeds. If that doesn't, then we'll go to the next step. We'll do the grip if I could just Plant a seed. I, I don't know how years we had that big stretch coming down the hill toward the you know, corner store essentially on County Road heading northbound. Um, but if we're near the end, I think it still has a lot of life. It's recently paid. But if, if we're not sure whether we want to do it because of the noise issue, if, when we get to the point where we think this is going to get repaid in the next year, 
maybe we do it then. That's and then right, yeah. and then you would test them on and by the time the screams are piercing our ears, yeah, we'll have right, right. ripped it up and repaved it. So well, this is gonna be one of those classic cases of you know, some people will be impacted and but the idea is to make it better for everybody on that right. road too. Right, it's so just that's about right. safety. I don't know what you mean. 
Well, I'll explain. I think that when it comes to relations with the road crew, I think that the two of you, Denise and Rick, should be told you're the ones that are dealing with the road crew. Rick is commissioner and you, Denise. That it's not like it would never come back to us, but that you know you would report back to us at each meeting and you know how are things going? We support the road crew, care a lot about them, and with, I, I think that it would be good to have two of us who are just doing that. It's just like you, Denise, and you, John, are the liaisons to the dam. Well, but Mark, I just want to be clear. I think you're at, you're confusing things. Rick and I were original liaisons to the road yeah. for the last two years. Yeah. Right. So, and I think you're referring to my act in that capacity to collect the items from out. I think you're alluding to that. From Actually, I was. Okay, I, I, so I don't. <laughs> no. So I, just, I, I, have, I have no problem. I I was, there's no, I just want to be clear yeah. here. Um, I was acting in my role to the extent that you were alluding to. I don't know what else you would be alluding to. Um, if, if Denise at this moment is a better fit, I, I totally support that and agree with that. Well, okay. But it has we to, have assigned roles. It has to be two people and not three. And so we, we have had me and Rick, that was two people. Right. Um, if Denise might substitute in for me and I can back up because they got plenty on my plate, that's fine too. But there's also a third person is Eric. And he's got, he's maintaining a relationship right. there. So, however you guys go about it, it needs to be coordinated with Eric. I think well, we have to, yeah, I <laughs> what we have to do too as a board, we talked about at the last meeting, you know, Eric interacting with the people, and I just want to interact with the local public. I'm right. trying to do a little bit of both. Right. Well, we you have know, to have, we have to figure this dynamic out. I think that's going to, I think what you and Eric do is going to overlap. Right. You know what, I don't think I'm, ready for this discussion. I think this is something we need to think about. Well, okay, let me put something on the table so you understand that I was not referring to you. I was referring to me, and I'll tell you. I think we need to pick two of us to deal with our lawyers when it comes to the petition to form a union. Okay. And I think it should be Sharon. I thought it could be because he was the chair. I thought it could be you because you a lot of you should. For the audience, there has been a petition. This is this isn't the first time, but there's been a petition a new from petition. the a new petition from the road crew to unionize. We're positive, we're all union supporters, so it's not like we object to this. But this is something that has to be managed. It's this whole oh my god, this whole process that you have to go through. Anyway. So originally, I thought, well, it should be, it should be Sharon and you. And I was told that you were so busy with the enforcement litigation that you would say no. You know, and, and that's that's an accurate. And I, by and, the way, and, I made the mistake yeah. of inserting myself, and I had a conversation with the lawyers, and Denise did too. And the lawyers wrote back to us and said, "Will you tell us who was authorized?" Yeah, so that's why I think we should just decide. Well, well, so to be just to be clear about my role, and I'm going to say at this point, my disinterest in taking on yet another responsibility. I think I probably, or anybody here, have the deepest union experience. I, I've been on bargaining teams. I've vice chaired bargaining teams. I've been a union activist for 30 years. But, and I, I, I sway. I'm pro union. So okay. folks, you know, <laughs> people hate unions. I'm very pro union. So um, that's generally a good fit for me, and I also understand contracts and negotiations and all the processes and uh, to, that we need to follow. Um, but I am pretty swamped, and I'm being pressured to back off a little bit on my workload. You know, I got a home environment that's being impacted, so I I am going to defer it's time to some other folks. Okay, and on I, that front, that's I, I respect that people may not be ready for this discussion, but yeah. I think pronto we should stop here. Well, and we agreed that as we did the last time, 
that it's not going to just be, it's going to be the full board. That decides anything. Well, it meets with the crew, and I just think that we need to think about this and maybe make a list of all the different things that are going on and who's going to do what before we start talking about it. I think it's a little... uncomfortable right now to talk about who's going to do what. Well, I think we should do it soon. Right. Now, I don't disagree with that, but I think that, this, you know, this hasn't been war. None of us have thought much about it. So okay. I'd like to All say right. that we put it on a future agenda or something. Right. I guess I just want to explain just like we did with the dam. Right. It doesn't mean when we say that so-and-so and so-and-so on the board is the liaison or the one, it doesn't mean that they make all the decisions or anything, and they have to come back anytime anything significant goes on, they have to come back to the right. full board. And it wouldn't mean that, I mean, you know that we're all very desirous of meeting with the road crew and helping them out in any way we can, and so that wouldn't be impacted. It's right. just a question That's of right. which of us, so That's that right. we don't have people, the lawyers are asking to know who's delegated to talk to us. Mm -hmm. So, yes, okay. Thank you. Uh, and well, wait, I think we need to decide this. We have an ongoing conversation. This is not something that has to be worn. We need to decide this tonight. I mean, the lawyers, who are they, they going to contact? All of us outside of a quorum? I think that's inappropriate. Um, and and I, I, I have no problem with Sharon and Mark dealing with that right now. Um, and then if that's not a good fit, for the rest of the board, then we can take it up next meeting. But we need, right now, to assign people. Denise has got piles on her plate. You've got more on your plate. I don't know if Sharon's okay with that or not. Mark, I'm happy to help okay out with the contract stuff. We did this one before. But we can't have three people. Right. right. I, well, either Sharon, Denise, or Sharon and Mark. I agree, Sharon needs to be part of it. Uh, you know, however, you, your pleasure. I don't know if Sharon wants to do this either, but um, Denise is interested. I don't know you know what? Let's, let's table this. And right. so I, go to the attorney's contact this week. Uh, I, I'm sorry, guys. I, I am here. I'm going to get Sparky Bunyan. But um, I am. <laughs> <laughs> again, I just heard my voice again. I'm here. I am reviewing this stuff. I do think we need a point person or two, or two people. Uh, I, I am I am willing and I think it's a good fit to do that. Um, if Mark, if you're up for joining me with that, that would be that would be great. I, yeah, I mean Denise, I appreciate, but you are you're also taking up a lot of so much in the town offices right now. Yeah, well, that's not a good enough reason for my, for my well, perspective. Um, why don't we say this? It's not permanent. Let's just say for the moment, Sharon, you're it, and let's decide. Let's talk talk about it, think about it, and let's decide who the second person is next week. Okay? Sounds good. And Sharon, for the next week, you get to play the game. You get to play with the lawyers on this, okay? Uh, I don't what? Are we okay? All right. Um, agenda items. Agenda preview, future agenda items. I think. I think it's pretty well listed. I think it's pretty well listed. And we got the only thing is I do want to let everybody know something, and I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it. On anything to do with the Curtis Pond Dam, I recuse myself because I have a place on Curtis Pond. It's not a legal conflict, but it certainly looks like enough of a conflict that I'm. I do that. So, out of order, I'm just saying well, just that like issue is on the agenda for next time, but we really need an answer from our lawyers about the process that we have to go through if we want to get to the point of warning the bond issue. Right. And we haven't got that answer yet, so if we don't get it, right. it'll bloop come off the So, agenda. Denise and I can handle that. Okay. Because yeah. we've been assigned that. Right, right. Okay. That's right. All right. There's clarity. There's clarity there. Okay. So. Any, I, I would just ask. We just did a round robin. We're not. We don't. We don't need another executive session, right? Okay, because we had that was on the litigation. We did it. Okay. Yeah. 
Is there? there is, I just before we wrap up, there was there was another item that hit uh, our email today, uh, and will be on a future agenda. And I said that I am similarly refusing with yeah. that. I just want to make sure that somebody saw that. Why? Which email are you talking Why? about? Why? Yeah. What are you talking about? Because the tank. The tank. Is it what was it? The tank. The. the... Yeah. 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 The tank. Oh, the Drew Lamp. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, you don't have to answer my question. Right. You are. Okay. Yeah, we saw that. Um, okay, thank you. So, folks should know Drew Lamb leases for a nickel 95 uh, a spot on town, the town forest property, to for his sap collection tank. And so, annually, we revisit that lease agreement and decide whether or not. It's more like happen. every three years. Or every right, three. Has it been three? I thought it was every, okay. it's every couple of years. Okay, so. So yeah. it's come, coming to, and Sharon is going to recuse herself for her set of reasons. And we'll take that up next okay. meeting. Uh, anyone in the audience like to say anything about a round robin? Larry, do you want to come up? Uh, sure, I don't have that much to say. Larry Bush, uh, I just wanted to second Mark's idea about reaching out to the public in a more informal and informative way uh, about this um, somewhat unusual, but very desirable meeting that we're proposing to have next week. Um, I, I think people have trouble if it's buried in the necessary legalese of, a, of an agenda. And so having it on the agenda as clearly as possible is great, but I, I would very much support the idea of, of, of this kind of reaching out directly and saying, you know, we'd like to hear what you have to say if you feel like you need to come and say something. And we're also going to tell you what's been going on. If you have concerns about that, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So, anyway, you know, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Larry. Thank Sorry. you, Larry. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? David. David. <laughs> David Healy. And if I'm not mistaken, on how many roads coming into Maple Corner, you go from 50 to 25. Yeah, you could put 40. There's a 40 in there. There's a 40 in there, David. It must be in blue past. It's a 40, yeah. but you go only go 50. Okay, I wanted to talk to you about that. And people, <laughs> and people on County Road have talked on West County Road have talked to us. And people just go like they just go like hell right through there. Legally, you can't drop more than fifteen miles an hour. I thought it's not incremental. Yeah, it's so not it's not But this does prompt something I want. I meant to tell you, Rick, last time I went down that road. I don't think there are any warnings. And so all of a sudden you're so you're right. viol you're in violation. So I'm going 50. I actually try to go 40 out of respect these days. I used to go. Well, but I'm going 50, and all of a sudden, by the time it comes into focus, uh, with my legally legal eyes but old eyes, I'm already violating. So I'm hitting the brakes. And for those who want to save on gas, I like the, the warning. You know, speed zone ahead, 40 miles. Then I take my foot off there. I'm not burning brakes. I'm not wasting fuel. And it's a more comfortable transition. So too with the 25. We go from a 40, and then suddenly you're at 25. It's real. It's bad signage. It's really bad. I don't know why it's that way. So you could also make a concession. To <laughs> right. Well, and we're talking about that. We've talked about that. It's interesting. You know, you can make it what? Denise, I didn't hear. 40. 40. Make the whole make the whole county road forty, and then it's consistent all the way through, which yeah. makes perfect yeah. sense to me. Now people are still going fifty, but <coughs> people are still going to go fifty. Well, they got seventy. Yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, is there any other comment, thoughts? I'll save it for next. Week. All right. Okay. Good. Uh, I look forward to that. Uh, and uh, Sharon, will you still be? You'll you'll be with us, right? Maybe. Depends uh, on the other people. I, I yeah. I assume I will be. Um, I will certainly be wearing uh, what's it called? A really good mask. Yeah. Okay. So I hear a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, second. The second. The second. Roll call. Uh, roll call. Denise. Hi. John? Yes. Rick? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Mark says yes. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for coming.